Alrighty, friends. Just waiting for this to go live. How you doing over there? Okay, and we are we are live. Welcome back to another podcast. I get asked so many times uh, throughout social media, uh, on YouTube comments, direct email, things like that about how to test for immunity. And I think it's it's a really important time. Whether or not you've been vaccinated or you think you've been exposed, you can still benefit from this episode. So we're going to talk about the exact test to order. Now, I know a lot of you are driving and you're sort of listening to this or you're replaying this in iTunes and that is phenomenal. Thank you for being here. But in the show notes and the description below here on the YouTube video that we're streaming this from, you will get access to a little PDF. And in that PDF are the exact tests that you should order. It's on page two and it is a blood work cheat sheet. Some of you have already gotten this, but I re-updated this to include not only just other comprehensive metabolic tests that can be done through LabCorp and other commercial labs, but very specific immune markers that we're going to talk about today and also updated it to include the metabolic parameters that you should consider when it comes to overall metabolic health hormones, DHA, and much more. So even if you've downloaded this before, you might want to re-opt in to re-download this new one. So links will be below. Let's dive into it. I know you're short on time. And this is really important. Uh, I think during this time where we are hearing so much about the Delta variant, we're hearing so many employers, universities, schools, cities, organizations, whether you work for the government uh, locally or federally, things like that, there are talks of mandatory immunizations for all people. Now, what would be interesting to see is how many of these people uh, that have been exposed naturally, what is their antibodies compared to individuals who have been, uh, you know, been immunized? I mean, I don't know that this has been studied. Now, again, I'm not anti-immunization at all. I think this is a personal choice that is bestowed on every single person to figure out what is the risk benefit for them. Now, um, so let's not talk about immunizations. We're going to focus on assessing the body's immune response to natural exposure or to exposure via immunotherapy. Okay. Actually, what I'm going to do is I'll make this bigger so you can see this, okay? Um, this is going to be exactly what you need. Uh, for those of you that don't know, my real legal name is Julian. It's a long story. My dad uh, wasn't a huge fan of Julian. He wanted to be Michael. So that's when you're looking at this, you're, you're like, who's this Julian guy that's 38 years old? That is me. My, my legal name is Julian Michael Mutzel. Uh, that's a, a conversation for, for another day. So what you see here is my C-reactive protein. I just include that. It's 0.16, which is... Uh, very low. Okay. Now this wasn't fasting, so it could have been closer to zero, but that doesn't matter. Okay. What we want to look at is there's two different ways to assess this. Now I looked at my quantitative antibodies, which I will share with you very soon, but I also looked at the nucleocapsid. So let's briefly talk about the physiology. Now, so there's different uh, ways in which your immune system will make immunologic memory against the current public health problem, the SARS-CoV-2 virus, because there's different immunogenic proteins on the surface of this, you know, RNA uh, virus. Um, so we obviously have heard a lot about the spike protein. So one of the, the antibodies that you're going to hear a lot about is the spike protein antibody. But if you've been exposed naturally, what you will also make antibodies against is the nucleocapsid. There's also the membrane and there's the envelope. But to the best of my knowledge, and there's also non-structural proteins on SARS-CoV-2, but to the best of my knowledge, that is not currently uh, sort of commercially available, okay? So what you have access to is SARS-CoV-2 antibodies. Now, there are two different ways to assess this, and I ran both of these. I don't necessarily recommend doing that. I was just curious to see because one is a radio amino assay and one is called an ELISA test. So they're different tests, and I was just curious. Now, I was. this is, based, by the way, friends, I've invested over $1,000 in antibody testing over the last nine months because I was exposed in December. I'm very curious to sort of see, hey, for someone that had a natural infection, what is the antibody uh, seropositivity? What does that look like over the long haul? So I, this is now my, I've invested $1,000 in this crap. Uh, I want to share this with you because we hear on the media all the time, natural immunity, it doesn't last. It doesn't last. It's like, okay, well, is that for everyone or for people that are eating lunch at McDonald's? I'm not really sure. Okay, so what you actually, I don't recommend this IgG test. There's a semi-quantitative IgG test, okay? We're going to look at that in just a moment. But that's what you may only have access to. If you live in Canada, if you're in Europe, you may not have access to the semi-quantitative test that I recommend, okay? But mine is positive, again, just because they're two different assays. Now, for curiosity's sake, if you really feel that you've been exposed and you're also immunized 
and you want to figure out if you have natural immunity from the exposure, the SARS-CoV-2 antibody to the nucleocapsid or the N protein is interesting. And so this keeps coming back positive for me. Again, the nucleocapsid is another structural pro is another protein on SARS-CoV-2. So check that out. If you're driving, whatever, please opt in to the email newsletter and you will get access uh, to this. Now, here, excuse me, this will be positive if you've been vaccinated or if you've been exposed through natural course of infection. This is the semi-quantitative antibody to the spike protein. Now, this is why I like this over this right here, over the SARS-CoV-2 antibody, because you can see here, the SARS-CoV-2 antibody to just the spike protein without the semi-quantitative doesn't quantify the, the levels of antibodies. And so this is what you want to look for. And again, friends, this is the SARS-CoV-2 semi-quantitative antibody to the spike protein. That's what you want to look out for. That's what you want to check out. Okay. So um, what is very curious here now, you know, the Delta variant uh, sort of talk discussion didn't really start coming uh, to the forefront of our of our consciousness until I would say mid July, but it was interesting because my antibody previous levels. Now, what's cool about LabCorp is they're showing you the previous levels that I tested uh, in in uh, April was the last time I looked at this mid April, and the levels of my spike protein are higher now than they were back in April. Now that goes, and this is using the same assay, same lab, same everything. So what that leads me to suspect is I have been exposed to COVID recently, SARS-CoV-2. Did, was I symptomatic? No, I don't. I, did, I have not gotten sick since December of 2020. So that is sort of interesting. Either that or something triggered my immune system to make more antibodies. Was it? I have no idea. But this is what's interesting. Now, friends, again, if you've been immunized, now this is, I think, actually a really important point for those of you who have been immunized. I think this is worth testing, you know, especially if you have pre-existing underlying conditions, because you don't you want to know if you're getting the protection that you hope to be getting from the from the immunity, uh, from the immunization. So this is this is really interesting. Now I think this should be more widely talked about and discussed. Uh, unfortunately, there's so much censorship going on. It's like this conversation is like so taboo. But we should. This is what we really should be studying. Who are responding? really well to the immunotherapy and who are not what are their lifestyle and nutritional factors what is their exercise habits what are their sleep habits what other underlying health conditions are associated with a, a an optimal or suboptimal antibody response to this to this um to this immunotherapy so something to consider again i'm just answering asking questions i, I would love to see more and more people test their antibodies. And by, and by the way, friends, the tests that I listed uh, in the PDF that you can get access to below, uh, really, uh, it's readily uh, available and affordable and, and all of that. So anyway, um, let's get into this new test. So this is the new T-Detect. And again, it's t-detect.com. It's all listed in the PDF that you can get access to. Now, What's cool about this company, it's called Adaptive Biotechnologies, okay? So they are a company and they've won a lot of awards for innovation and, and so forth with, with regards to the current public health problem. So um, they they have this, their, their brand is PWN Health. Uh, I don't know what that stands for, but anyway, they created some a cool test. And essentially what this test does is it looks at your T-cell immunity. So if we just break down your adaptive or memory immunity into to compartmentalize this very simplicity, very simply into two different buckets, you have your antibody bucket and your T-cell bucket, okay? Now, what's unique about that redundancy is you have some redundancy, just like I said. So um, if you are, are exposed to a pathogen that you've already been exposed to and your antibodies go down, you still have this backup system that arguably cellular immunity is more more efficacious and so forth than than antibodies and they work different mechanistically we did a whole breakdown and podcast on this and i will uh, link that video here uh, so that you can consume that afterwards if you are so interested but we talked about how antibodies function differently when it comes to immunopathology um, how that is different differentiated from t cell immunity so t cells to the best of my knowledge in uh, go after infected cells, uh, and that's why it's really referred to cellular immunity. And antibodies will go after 
uh, different cells that are expressing um, on the extracellular surface of of if they're not yet um, infected, but antigen presenting cells and so forth, uh, antibodies will go after these cells that, that are um, expressing these antigens. So they're, they're, they're a little bit different. Now, what's interesting is the antibodies might go down if you're not exposed, whereas there is a lot of uh, lasting memory when it comes to your T cells. And that's why this company, Adaptive Biotechnologies, came out with this new T cell assay. Now, what I was not impressed with to be totally real, is the assay. It just says positive or negative. You're like, okay, fine, but it would be really cool to see, you know, on, you know, how your T cell immunity, because I'm sure they basically drop an antigen in a Petri dish with your T cells or something and see how your cells respond, or maybe it's, I'm not sure exactly how it works, but it would be interesting to see, okay, well, yeah, it's positive, but but how do you fit in with regards to other people who have been exposed in terms of the, the motility or the activity of your T cells? And maybe it's just a, a, a you know, it's just black or white. I don't know. Um, so either positive or negative, I'm not, not really sure. But this is interesting. Now, I think this is helpful because, you know, for example, when I'm around elderly people, um, I feel pretty comfortable being around elder, elderly people knowing that I have very high levels of antibodies and I also have this redundancy system, uh, this T-cell immunity around. So when I'm around, you know, look, my parents are in their 70s, late 60s, right? So it's like if I'm around them, you know, I feel I feel pretty good about being around them and, and not getting them ill. You know, of course, I'm not around them when I'm sick and stuff like that, but you get the idea. Um, so this can be sort of a peace of mind for some individuals if you're around other individuals that are of high risk. Because um, just this week, I mean, I know, let's see, so um, Sam, my friend B, I don't want to reveal his full name, uh, just got COVID. Um, all the mind pump people, Max Lugavere, like I know six or seven people literally in the last two days that have all contracted it, right? So this thing is totally spreading out there. Now, all these people exercise, eat good food and do all that. So of course, none of them are hospitalized or uh, in, a, in an ICU anywhere, uh, but this thing is going around. And so I think it's important um, to, to look at this and, and sort of see. Now, a lot of people feel like they got covid and they test these things and they really didn't. So that's another interesting thing as well. Um, so that's what's kind of fascinating. Uh, friends, I do want to let you know that these videos and these podcasts are brought to you by our sister company, Myoscience Nutrition, tools to help you support your whole body health and micronutrient balance. If you have not checked out berberine hydrochloride as a tool to kickstart your fast, you are totally missing out. This is one of the most effective natural compounds to help kick you into ketosis and launch your fast. It's phenomenal. You can take it in the morning or you can take it before dinner or after dinner, and it really has a lot of health supporting benefits. It can help with food cravings cravings and appetite and much more. You can hop on over to myoscience.com. That's M-Y-O-X-C-I-E-N-C-E.com, myoscience with an X.com and use the coupon code podcast at checkout. Check out the berberine. It's phenomenal. Again, if you crave ice cream, cookies, treats, things like that after dinner and you're trying to compress your feeding window, take one or two capsules of berberine and you will be surprised at how it helps with some of those food cravings. So you can check that out and I will take a few of your questions here as we continue on. Wow, we have a a lot of questions. Awesome, guys. Uh, thank you for being here, guys and gals. Um, there are a lot of questions. I'm going to have to look on my phone here to, to sort of get into this. Um, and actually, what I might have to do, friends, is... Um, okay, we have a lot of you here. Hey, by, by the way, friends, um, I'm not going to be able to get to your questions, all of them today, um, because I have to take my daughter to camp right now. However, your questions are very important to me. So if you're here right now, you can leave a comment below and please don't put any V conversation. You know, the V, the Vaseline, don't, don't, I, please do not put that in the comments. That's not good. I will delete your comments if you do that because um, these platforms are heavily, there's a lot of interesting things going on and I, I really do not want you to put those in the comments, but I would like to address any questions you have. So please, um, I will go back in about an hour and, and reply to your comments. I'm not going to be able to get to everyone in the chat here. Um, but anyway, so there's a question right here. Uh, Roseanne, I just want to address this really important. Could the T detect be a false negative? Well, it, there could be some false positivity or false negativity because of the structural similarity with other human coronaviruses. Um, but 
it's pretty specific and it's won a lot of awards and a lot of people have sort of looked at this. Um, great question from Humble Half Breed. <laughs> funny uh, URL, username, whatever. Does berberine kill gains? Yeah, so you don't want to take berberine before you exercise. You do not want to take berberine hydrochloride before you exercise. You want to take it to kickstart a fast, and that kickstarting your fast could be in the early evening after your last meal, okay? It could be first thing in the morning as well. So great, great. Uh, PG says, is there a test to identify Delta variant? So they are doing genetic sequencing when or if you uh, have a, a confirmed case. So now, how can you look at the variance when it comes to the antibody response? Probably not going to be able to do that. Um, but that's a really good question. Thank you for that. Um, uh, Vaseline, I know, dude, it's crazy. Uh, friends, I'm glad that you're here. Thank you for that like button. Thank you for commenting. Thank you for not spreading uh, the word uh, things in the comments because that that's that's uh, just uh, we, we, we just can't have that. Um, and so forth. Uh, Cassie says, if you are not vaccinated and haven't had COVID, um, what to do around your grandparents. Hey, this is a great, this is a great question, Cassie. This, you know, um, I think your grandparents should be immunized. You know, um, we know that, that age is a risk factor for disease, severity and death and hospitalization. So your grandparents should be immunized. Hopefully they're protected. Um, I would, I would visit with them outside, go on a walk. That's what I would do. Um, so friends, uh, have an awesome rest of your day. I'm very grateful that you tuned in live and we will catch you soon. Bye now.